Hello and welcome! Here we are, Spirit Soars session, The Power of Ritual. Interestingly, because sometimes there's just rinky dinks that happen along the way, uh, I had some Wi-Fi issues earlier this morning, so the live session I had to do on my phone, which thank goodness there was another option, which means the recording is just for you. So it's going to be slightly different to the live session I just did. Um, so yeah, we'll go with that. But what was interesting was that I had just got in my mind that the theme was the power of intention, which does ripple beautifully with where we've been the past few weeks, from taking aim last week to the setting intentions of the week before. Um, even though the name was supposed to be or is or could be the power of ritual. So just see how that lands with you. As dream teacher and storyteller Robert Moss says, there's always something in the slip. So maybe it is more important for you, for us, or for me to focus on the power of intention today, but also the power of ritual that really embodies that. And to have this glorious understanding and for me to really amplify this in the session today that language begets reality ritual begets relationship so what we say is so important our words of poetry our words are coming from the deep inner architecture so whether we call it the power of intention or the power of ritual or weave them together because they are kind of a sacred marriage anyway, intention and ritual, how do we create an intention? You know, even if we make a movement and intend to be more open, to be stronger, to be more free, there is an inevitable braid of ritual that comes with that. So that's one little part <laughs> to see what's interesting. And secondly, the 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 way this session is crafted is around a lot of twists today. So as we're, we're going to start seated, so feel free to be joining me in that place to really focus on the inner guts, the intestinal fortitude, what, it, what are our deepest desires that are really indwelling here, that want to pulse out and pop forth and be lived and be known and embodied in the world. So, you know, any kind of twist, of course, is encouraging, strengthening the inner architecture, the intestinal tissue, you know, the opening up of the intercostals, the ribs, the heart, the lap muscles, and also ease of motion into the spine, especially as we age, you know, to age with spirit, to age with grace, to age with fortitude. Uh, yeah, so see how the twists and turns of the asanas suit you today. So we'll start by just coming into some pranayama, that extension of the life force energy, prana, life force, yama, to rest restrain or control, pranayama. We're learning to restrain, to control the life force energy, which isn't limiting, it's profound, you know, because we can waste so much of our bandwidth on bullshit. So it's that metaphor of, you know, how are our bowels at the moment? Are we having good craps, and, you know, good logs in the loo? Because <laughs> it matters. It's body as expression of subconscious mind. So feel free to take the jhana mudra, the tip of the first finger and thumb join. Palms can rest down comfortably on your knees, your inner thighs, wherever feels best for you. Allow the eyes to drape closed. And from that deep indwelling place, ripple up from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. So that awareness of resourcing into the back body, the support of the inner scaffolding that holds you strong to have the courage of your conviction to meet the twists and turns in life with, with humor. Not only humor, sometimes situations require gravity and understanding, 
an intuitive response. So see how that resonates for what's going on in your life at the moment. Mouth is softly sealed. And we'll introduce, along with our twist today, just that reminder of Mula Bandha and Udhyana Bandha. So Mula meaning root, the base of the spine around the perineum, the anal sphincter. And we'll play with it by drawing in and up you know, around the sex organs, so that gentle pulsing, the spider tugging on her own web. So towards the top of your inhale, you can start playing with Mula Bandha, drawing in and up at the base of the spine, toning the house of the pelvic floor. And on your exhale, start to engage Uniyana Bandha, Plunging navel, so that tenacity in your guts to encourage healthy intestinal tissue. The mucosal layers, so much of our serotonin is produced there, that neurotransmitter very important for our well-being. Secretory IgA, which is like this wonderful antiseptic paint that covers the gut tissue. Very important for immune health. So these things aren't simplistic, our bodies are wildly, wildly complex and really unknowable. So you become your inner physician, you become your inner artist, you become the knower of the knowing. So the power of ritual, the power of intention, what is it that you're conjuring up to not forget the magical teachings there are so many, and it's about mindset, clarity, honesty, breathing life into the things that matter to us, not getting caught and tumbled down in the knotweed of bullshit and resentments and dynamics that are really quite poisonous. And death is part of our ascension. So to die to the old ways, to flush out, just like we take a crap in the loo, we flush it away. If we never flush the loo, you know, after about two weeks, it would be literally very unpleasant. So to let, again, that be a metaphor, how are we flushing away our shit? Notice if you've forgotten Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha, so easy to get distracted. Focus. That dharana, that single pointed focus, remember from last week, the bow, the acuity, the mental acuity of the mind. And let's start breathing together, that unifying force of breath, the universality of it. Breathing in. And breathing out. Inhale from the base note to the top note at the crown. And exhale, staying seated tall, draw the Anabanda, strong inner architecture. Breathing in, let the belly naturally expand. And exhale, the side waists creep towards the midline, tenacious. Breathing in and breathing out. We'll bring the eyes into it now. So eyes staying closed. Inhale, lift the eyeballs up towards your third eye. That power of intention, power of ritual. See yourself claiming your medicine, your magic. And exhale, let the eyes relax. So we're exercising the musculature, the optic nerves, breathing in, eyes roll upwards towards the third eye, spirit eye. And exhale, let them relax, start to feel your nervous system resetting. Powerful. Breathing in, letting this be a ritual. And exhale, eyes relax. 
One more, breathing in, roll the eyes, strengthen the eye musculature. And exhale, let it soften. Feel the lightness across your brow. Wonderful. So you take an inhale, raise the arms all the way up, reach through the fingertips. Take another big inhale, so that strength in your belly, that navel center is climbing you up. It's okay to bend the elbows, let the inner thighs relax, and then twist to the left. Descend the arms down into your seated twist. So feel that rootedness at the base of the spine. Remember, the twists always come from the belly button upwards, so we're not wanting to torque the SI joints, the sacroiliac joints, or pull the pelvic bowl or anything like this. So stay rooted through the seat. So the twist is opening up the upper body. And just take your time to settle into being there. And rolling with the rhythm of your breath. Dancing the shoulders down the back. So the swan neck or the goose neck. I spent the past week in France hanging out with a family of geese, which has been really interesting to observe. Goose medicine is very powerful. They're very devoted to their young. They parent equally, father and mother. And uh, the babies grow so quickly, even the week I was there, they were starting to become really quite huge. So that long neck. And then turning the head to the right, so keeping the rest of the body as it is. And just softening through the shoulders, that little blooming in the chest, the breastplate. And then widen up the eyes. And then look as far to the right as feels comfortable. And breathe. So eyes are switches for the brain. We say there's so much. We could do a whole session just on the eyes. Um, which, yeah, which, which we do. We've done some somatic ses sessions just on the eyes and it's, it's profound. So see, you know, simple thing. See, literally and metaphorically, see that power of intention. See the power of ritual. And then turn the eyes, just the eyes to the head next day where they are, to the left. Stay breathing. If you need to flare the nostrils just to really get things going in, that oxygenation. Tiny, tiny blood vessels at the backs of the eyes. And then ease back through center. Just take a moment in the center, close the eyes, just let that integrate. See how everything feels. And then inhale, raise the arms up again. So root down through your sitting bones to reach up, light up through the tips of the fingers like candle flames are pouring upwards to the sky, our true north, our destiny. And then twist to the right, descend the arms and land in your twist. Feel free to sort of malleably move around the head and neck if that's gonna feel good, like ah. Oh. You know, sometimes there's those niggly bits right at the back of the heart, the thoracic spine, that want a little bit of ah. Oh. You know what wants to just get out, those daggers of betrayal. Blast them away. Become who you really are. Let go of the crud, the muck. It's okay, of course, to bear witness to the crud and the muck, otherwise we can't heal it. If we deny it and ignore it and pretend and become sycophantic, and blame others, it's that, that honesty with ourselves. And then turning the head this time to the left, to the side, the right side of the neck, just getting some love. Descend the shoulders down to so sprout up through the soft palate. And then this time looking as far to the left, just with the eyes. We have eye muscles that need strengthening for the health of the eyes. Breathe into your deep belly. Nurture your guts, your gumption, your integrity. Your boundaries, and that boundaries aren't just a fixed line, they're dynamic, they're dynamic. To learn to shapeshift, to learn to go beyond the veil, 
to see things far more clearly and not get so caught up in the nonsense. Look to the right. Again, you can flare the nostrils if you need more oxygenation going in. Uh, the health of our eyes can tell us a lot um, about our nervous system. So, you know, some of these eye movements can feel quite intense, so, you know, be kind to yourself. And then ease back to center, close the eyes, and just notice. So this record keeper of deep within, the Akashic records are the records of everything that ever existed and that ever will. So with our third eye, with our spirit eye, with magical teachings, with a connection to magic, it's got nothing to do with belief. You know, the questions of, oh, you don't believe in that, do you? What a closed circuit question. What a far more interesting question is, what's your connection to the divine? What's your connection to the elements? What's your connection to love? What's your connection to sexuality? You know, whatever it is. How to ask a beautiful question. Then we are able to receive far deeper answers. So what are your beautiful questions that you're asking? Power of ritual, we, we let these twists and turns be the ritual. And take a moment to really feel the energies of the now, depending when you're watching this tomorrow, which is Monday the 17th of July, very powerful new moon in Cancer. Cancer, the water sign ruled by the moon, very much about home and hearth, family, intimacy. But also we've got this profound change of the north and south nodes, which are the energy fields of the moon. They're not planets, they're the energy fields of the moon. Changing from where they've been in the past 18 months in Taurus and Scorpio, they are moving into Libra and Aries. Libra is an air sign, a relationship, balance, the scales of justice. Aries is a fire sign that is going to just frickin' pioneer and blaze their trail. And sometimes we need to use fire to burn up the bullshit, the status quo, the institutionalization, the poison of mainstream media. So to have real discernment, Feel discernment and let yourself have a ritual around this new moon and this moving of the nodes. Honor it. Ritual begets relationship. Language begets reality. What's your intention and what are the actions you're doing to make that a reality? That is magic. Changing thought to form anchoring it, becoming it, living it. Beautiful. Let's ease into a tabletop position. That might feel quite nice in the hips because we were seated for quite a long time. And moving through some trusty cat cow. So feel that, again, that tenacious energy in your low belly so that, you know, sometimes there can be a tendency to just collapse everything. I'm sure that's not the case now because, you know, we've been in this hoop for so long together now. But find that gentle drawing in at the low belly, almost so that you reach through the back of the neck, so that connection of the base to the soft palate in the mouth. Very important developmental place. It's where we were nourished um, as babies. And then inhale, dip the chest. Look up, bright eyes. Exhale, round in, press the floor away. Ooh, the Anabanda. Inhale, seat lifts. Exhale, rounding. Few more. Feel free to close the eyes if that amplifies your experience. Great, finishing off your last round. Enjoying enveloping into your body. 
We'll come into another twist now, so right hand scoops under the face. Let's take the left hand to the left hip for now. Re-establish just that ongoing reminder that twists happen from the belly button upwards. So by having the hand, if your shoulder allows it, you can splay it to the small of the back. So you're reminding yourself to keep the hips nice and stable. So hips are over the knees. And this might be your twist. So you're lifting up and out of this left armpit, long down the lap muscles, the side waist body as well. And that might, that might be just your sweet spot. If it's very intense in the neck, feel free to look down. Just, you know, make it your own. You might extend this left arm up, but you don't have to by any means. So there's twists and turns, the power of ritual, the power of embodiment, the power of intention. Relax the jaw, little twinkle by the eyes, like a night sky, starry, starry night. Sing more, dance more, love more, create more. And then this time we thread the left arm behind the right, we splay the palm facing up and bring the left ear down to the floor. So you have options here. You can take like a downward dog arm with the right arm. So we're opening things up. You could take this right hand into the left hip crease so that right shoulder opens up more. If you want to have a, another little play, you bring the right hand back down in front of the face and extend the right leg out to the side. And then you might tense the right fingertips so you're scooting the left arm even more open and you might even roll onto the back of the head and then open up the right arm. These are just ideas. No problem to keep the right knee down and just be where you need to be. If you have extended the right leg, just feel the hip, the knee, the ankle, and maybe pressing into the outer blade of the right foot. Make it work for you. So wildly opening, twisting and turning, this journey of life, how alive are we willing to live? And then ease out nice and gently, right hand in front of the face. Bring yourself back into your tabletop. Lovely. A little couple of movements between sides if you feel you need it. Then left hand into the middle of the mat, right hand to the right hip. Start to find that length through the spine. So lower belly gently draws in, long through the back of the neck, and then starting to lengthen down the, the left side body. Maybe looking up, maybe looking down. How does your neck want to feel, maybe extending this right arm, but keeping the hips beautifully over the knees. Gentle face, and then threading the arm over, so palm of the hand faces up. Take as long as you need to organize comfort in the head, and maybe this left arm is long, you can always just rest the forearm down if that's better. And this might be where you stay, it's no problem. You might experiment with taking the hand to the right hip crease. So this, this left shoulder is opening more. Or you might take the left leg out. I prefer to bring the left hand down just to balance myself before taking the leg out. And maybe this right arm scoots a bit more. And then we might take the left arm open. <laughs> you can play around with it. Be playful. Breathe. This can feel so good for getting all that stuckness out of the back of the heart. Oh. Whew. Feel free to make noises. Oh. Keep the breath moving so it's the wind in your sails. And then bring the hand back down in front of the face so that neck is nice and safe, releasing out. And bring the leg back in. Yeah, and then just freestyle it. Whoo, freestyle. Building that confidence in yourself. Maybe a little shoulder roll. 
And then let's come into our, oh actually before we come into downward dog, let's have a little another moment of seated. So into our seated straddle. So see how the legs are feeling. And indeed how the upper body is feeling now. So we've done a fair amount of twisting already. Not a crazy amount, but just be curious. Sometimes it doesn't take much to, oh, just do a little bit. I'm like, hmm, feels so much better. So really bear down into the base of the spine. You might do a little shimmy dance. Of course, if you prefer frog legs uh, and feet supported to the floor, go for that. If your legs are long, spark up the feet. Keep the heels connected so you've got that anchor point. And then a little bit more of a kundalini and spark. Twisting, so we're rinsing out the belly. You might come low or you might stay higher up. If your knees are bent, feel free to just tap opposite knee. You're still getting the benefit of the twist. So what's interesting here, um, if I notice myself in it, is can we keep the chest lifted so that we're not too slumpy? And the hips, the sitting bones are nice and anchored. So again, we're not torquing around that sacred iliac joint, which is kind of at the back. And we're not pulling into the groin muscles. Of course, we want to challenge ourselves. You know, a side effect of yoga is that our bodies become stronger. We breathe better. We walk better. We become better people. Isn't it so? So, we want to, you know, count our blessings that we have access to these teachings and that we're willing to keep connecting with them and being curious and, of course, launch our own research assignments. Slow it down if you need to, pace it up if that's going to please you. Woo! Woo! Make some noises. that lives in our belly. It's so strong. It's the lower Dante N in the Tao. The Tao means the way, the Taoist tradition. Tao, Tao, same meaning. One of the most ancient forms of medicine is Chinese medicine. Very, very knowledgeable. Five, four, three, two, one, and come to stillness, close the eyes, notice. Breathe into what you've just freed up for yourself. Ah. Become your intention. Let your whole life be a ritual, be a prayer, be an offering to the divine. And then allowing the legs to come into a cross-legged position. Nestle back into your seat. Ripple back up through the Shishimna Nadi, the central channel. And then take one hand to the belly and just give it a rub. So, mmm, all those good vibrations. We are made of light and sound. And this circular motion, the mother rub, all around the umbilicus, the navel center, all the intestinal fortitude to conjure from deep within. The power of ritual, the power of intention. Language begets reality. Ritual begets relationship. How are we living that in our world? The simple things are the incredible things. And then just let the hand relax, close the eyes, breathe into the echo of that circular rub. And just notice, notice how you feel, notice what helps you center to bring you back to the sacred equipoise. Wonderful. So we'll come back into our tabletop position. You might feel the echo of that belly rub. 
and then tuck the toes. Take that belly rub into your Adho Mukha Svanasana, that glorious upside down V shape and make it your own on this day, in this body. Our bodies are always changing. So there's always opportunity to begin again, to release something, to renew. Broaden the upper back, wrap the shoulders around towards the ears. So all that freedom in the upper back can be felt. Wonderful, we'll come back down to the knees, step the right foot forwards soulfully stabilizing into this right foot. Feel free to take this left knee back in space, left hand down to the mat so it feels safe, bone stacking, shoulder, elbow, wrist. Not that it's perfection, but that just it makes sense. So all of this left side body can lengthen. So the more we twist and strengthen the center, the more we can almost dance around the center, dance around the center. And then we come into another twist, right arm either exalts up to the sky or feel free to keep it to the right hip, lengthen through the back of the neck, almost laying your energy towards the back of the head, the back body, so our tendency is to tip forward sometimes. And then you can feel free to lift this back knee so we power back through the heel and stimulate the glutes, just optional. So the twists and turns, strengthening the temple of the body, opening up to the goddess, the moon, Venus, these bright lights. Breathe deep into the belly, feel free to look down so you're not straining. Effortless ease, not stressful strain. Return the knee down if you chose to lift it. We stay nice and steady in this right foot. Rise up. So even noticing that as you press into this right foot, you activate the thigh and feel that there is um, a safety in the pelvis. So we're not kind of, oh, we're not collapsing, but we're, we're strong in this area. Then bring the hands to prayer in front of the chest. Exalt the breast plo <laughs> the breastbone into your thumbs. And then twist again to the right. So the back of the left arm shelves itself onto the thigh. Again, if you're feeling juicy in the leg and the center, it does ask our legs to be strong. You can lift that back knee and then press prayer to prayer, hand to hand. So you amplify the twist. Again, lay the energy into the back of the head. Sweep the shoulders down away from the ears and breathe. Ease in the face. And release. Well done. Ease back into downward dog. Ah, sigh it out. Make a noise. You know, the primal, feral aspects of ourselves that also need expression so we don't become reductive robots hypnotized and distracted from the true brilliance of who we really are. Come down to the knees and we'll set up for our second side. Left foot forward, adjust this back knee as you please. Right hand stays to the earth. So heaven and earth. And that phrase, a match made in heaven, really is, if we consider the sanctity of marriage, that it is intended to be a match made in heaven so to exalt this left arm up towards the ancestors that they may guide us towards more matches in heaven. Whatever that be, whether it be calling in a new lover, whether it be calling in a new love of how we dance and engage with ourselves or a friendship or a work project, something that is Venusian. Feel free to lift this back knee if you wish. So Stay steady, that sure-footedness in the front foot. So there's quite a nice opening into the glutes and hamstrings here. Of course the hand can stay to the hip as you wish. 
And you can look down if that's better. Just be mindful you're not hyperextending this right elbow so we're not locked into the elbow. We don't want to lock ourselves in. We want to be free. And release. Well then we come back up. We'll require a bit of steadying sometimes. Hands to prayer. Lift into the prayer. And then twist to the right. So your shelf, the back of the right arm, presses down into the thigh. Widen the space between your heart by laying the back of the head back. So it's not that we're becoming out of alignment, we're coming into alignment because our tendency is to be forwards in life. Especially with technology, you know, fixations, anxiety that are all amplified by mainstream media. So to really just come away from untruths, delusions. Breathe into the belly. You start to, the, the more deeper the twist, the more you'll feel it. <laughs> Maybe in the right ribs, you know, see how it feels. If you want to lift that back knee, I normally sometimes on this side need to use my hands to help that up and then I would come back into the twist. So get there however you need to. Strong legs. And release, well done. Adho Kishvanasana. Probably a sigh of relief after that. Loosen off the head and neck. Hard work, good plans. <sighs> Beautiful deep breaths. Really loosen off the head and neck. Really let that go. The well earned child's pose. So, however you wish to express that. Just rest. Breathe into the belly. Space within. Who we are on the inside matches who we are on the outside. If we spend our time alone, depressed and anxious, and you know, and then we're going out in the world pretending everything's okay, that is complete discordance. So who we are on the inside matches who we are on the outside. Who are we when we close the door to our homes? Who are we when we open the door and go outside again? So of course, this is not, oh, I'm like this, like that. It's just noticing who we are in this spiral. Dare we be wildly happy at home? To sing in our homes, to dance, to say sweet things to ourselves in the mirror. Not because we're wishing for an outcome or because we've read it in a magazine, but because it's delight. We delight in the realm of the goddess, of Inanna, of Isis, of Ishtar, of Diana, of Mother Mary, of Mary Magdalene, of the Melissa, the bee priestesses, of Aphrodite, of Hestia. You know, fill in the blanks. Who are the goddesses you love? And how do they come alive in you? Beautiful. Take your time to come to lying on your back. Let's see how we're doing. Beautiful. And we'll just come into some just easing and relaxing. So feel free to hug the knees in for some moments. So especially when we do some of the more vigorous twists. Uh, you know, we can be really rinsing debris, changing the neural landscapes within, around the spine, around the guts, the intestinal tissue. So to just really rest with knees to chest, otherwise known as wind relieving pose. So just see how this feels, relax into it. And the deep breaths into your spine. Feeling the rise and fall of your belly. And that real sense of your back body held into the arms of Mother Earth. 
and open up your eagle wings, your arms, really softening the shoulder blades down the back. So if you need to do a wiggle and a squirm to just feel that mm, connection. So the ribs, the front ribs can soften. Only if it's there in your anatomy to squeeze the knees, the thighs, the ankles together, do. And then you might light up the feet as well. Take a nice inhale, lengthen through the central channel. So soft palate to the base of the spine. And then exhale the knees to the left. So that lovely, real, supine twist. You might lift the heart, let the left shoulder blade move over to the left and the right shoulder blade drape even more open. If it's there for you to turn the head to the right, feel free. And just really coming into a wind down now. Soften into the jaw, the mouth. So how do we choose our words? What do we say? What are the kinds of conversations we're having at the moment? Are they banal and mundane and just pressing a record player to say the same old shit? Are we willing to just meet the moments again and again for what they really are, for the vibrancy, for the vitality, for the texture? And also sometimes that means choosing silence. Not that we've silenced ourselves or been silent, silenced, but so we're sovereign in our silence. Feel the rise and fall of your belly. The rinsing and wringing out, heralding in new ways nourishing the cells of your body with what you eat, with also what we digest and metabolize by how much we expose ourselves to stuff that is not nutritive. The programs we watch, what we listen to, it all seeps in. So that all we can do is strengthen this, this vessel of the body and to be the change makers in our own lives, in whatever way that means for you. The weavers and the spinners, the intentions and the rituals. Gently let the knees come through center. And you might like to squeeze the inner knees, the inner ankles, flare and fire up the feet again. You can lift the heels a little bit away so you can feel that core engagement. Maybe the knees move away a little bit. You can play around with that. Like where are you in your core strength right now? How does it feel to be strong? And then knees over to the right this time. So the descending colon lives on the left side of the body. So that real letting go when we have a bowel movement the final movement is down out through the descending colon that meets the rectum and then out into the great swimming pool we call toilette. A la toilette. <sighs> Maybe a sigh of relief. That right shoulder blade can lift. Left shoulder blade dives down. So that wild opening in the heart to live more and more from freedom of the heart, truth, emotional compass. To mind our words, our words are poetry, our bodies are poetry. Life is a gift. How much you're able to settle, how much you're able to just let yourself be,
what feels to be accessible in your belly now. The ebb and flow, just like the tides. The in and the out. Gateways open, gateways close. Are we seizing our opportunities? Is our fear holding us back? What excuses do we make? Are they the same old excuses? Have we justified something and sold ourselves something? So every breath, an opportunity to dive deeper, to become lighter like a white feather drifting down from a wide open vast sky for your spirit to be as light as that the vayu vayu means wind in sanskrit the vayu that moves through you in your breath soul vivifying breath to awaken to who we truly are. To be consistent in the things that keep us well. To enjoy the company of others. So to be very discerning who we spend our time with. And only you can know these things. Friends are there for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Things come and go. So to just have that deep acceptance of what is. And the power of ritual, the power of movement, of breath, of honouring nature, of watching flowers bloom in the garden. continues to crack us open to the ways of the goddess, the ways of the feminine, of collaboration, of community, that change can be awkward and difficult. And how often do we truly encounter honest conversation? And are we contributing to honest conversation or are we part of the lie? So to dare to be so intimate with our own selves, our sensuality, our sexuality, our relationship with food, how alive are we willing to be? And so many are fast asleep. We breathe in. We revive, we breathe out, we die. Death is part of our ascension and to be willing to die repeatedly to ourselves, which is ultimately getting out of our own way. Where the ego wants to defend and prop and excuse, we turn towards the true medicine, the deeper medicine of the soul. And if that means crying out, weeping out, raging out, screeching out for help, and trust that it will come. To get beautiful answers, we need to ask beautiful questions. Just as it is in conversation with other people in our lives. Beautiful. Let the knees come back through center. And just give yourself a minute or so of just enjoying being on the back, hugging the knees in, maybe pumping the knees in a little bit to loosen off the low back, or moving the knees away and letting the hands just hold them, the arms can elongate. Or maybe it's just rocking, feeling that sense of the water inside. And then our next place is Shavasana. 
So after a long meandering supine twist, we come to lay to rest. To rest our bones, to let our blood circulate. So we understand the sacred circuitry within, the circulation, the change, the dynamic flow. And just notice how you're feeling within your own skin, how intimate you are with yourself, how close are you to yourself? What are the things that bring you closer to who you truly are and what are the things that take you far, far away from that? Where are we willing to say enough? So allow the eyes to relax deeply. Let's become at ease with yourself, at ease. You might like to rest the hands on your belly. How the twists and turns have brought you to the here and now. And how twists, 
just like in our yoga practice, help to clarify, help to rinse. Just as we know when there's a plot change in our lives, to embrace it. Because life is full of twists and turns. If we were living in paradise all the time, there'd be no challenge, there'd be no growth, there'd be no nuance. So to celebrate breathe into the parts of you that have perhaps forgotten that sense of celebration what is it to truly come to our senses and to let our senses help us remember how alive we really are Remember to include ritual and intention in all your days, in all the many ways that your intuition guides you. Any stretches, any wriggles, any yawns, any squirmings, any sounds. Just embrace them, allow them. And you might like to rise up, of course, you're on your own timeline, so feel free to rest for longer or, you know, get up and about. If you are sealing your practice, avec moi, we come to the prayer and we seal our practice. Namaste.